All right, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Um, this is actually kind of nuts how many people are over here now. And I keep saying that. Channel continues to grow. The video I did from Saturday has like 4,000 views on it. Um, I don't know what to say. Thank you. Um, if you can support me using Patreon, check out the logo up top because uh, both my channels, mysteriously, since I started getting monetized, uh, my music channel has really dropped as far as revenue and the views aren't too bad over there. So I'm not sure why the precipitous decline in revenue, but I could use a few bucks. You know, you can do a buck a month on Patreon and you won't miss it. And you can say, yeah, man, got to support Dave who's supporting Tulsi. And that's what this is. So uh, I appreciate that if you can, if you can do that. Um, it will say, when you get over to Patreon, it will say I'm making music videos, but that's me, okay? It's Dave and, you know, um, it's totally good. If you wanna send me a message, once you send it, say, hey, I'm one of the um, Tulsi Kratz and I figured I'd send you a buck, so um, thanks in advance in case you do. Uh, I will talk to you over there though because we can message back and forth. Um, it's actually a good way to communicate and you avoid uh, any trolls. Uh, that might, because trolls typically don't want to pay to, uh, you know, send you insults. However, uh, it has happened to me, so <laughs> it's all, you know, this whole social media world, this is why I'm like, people are like, hey, Dave, you should come over here to Facebook, because we're doing this. I'm like, Facebook, really? Like a group? Because, you know, I, one I mean, I've gotten attacked in groups, just minding my own business, having opinions, and people are like, you know, and they're calling you all kinds of names, and they're delving into your past and, and you're like, all I wanted to do <laughs> was be on social media. I did not want to be attacked. Um, I wanna talk seriously about polling and how polling is a real problem right now because these polls that they're doing um, so these candidates can qualify for the debates and I'm talking specifically about Tulsi Gabbard. Um, I, it, the, the polls aren't accurate. We know that for a fact because they're not polling anybody under 40, all right? And Tulsi, I'm sure, is going to do well with people under 40. Um, also, in the case of Tulsi Gabbard, she's going to pull independents, libertarians, and republicans, all right? So those people, uh, if you're in an open primary state, good for you. If you're not, you really have to think about registering. I know it sounds dirty and awful and you're gonna to have to shower uh, after you do it, but you're gonna to have to register as a Democrat. I did it. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. You don't have to tell anybody you did it. You just do it um, and uh, you make the most of it and you vote for Tulsi Gabbard. And then, you know, down the road, when this process, um, gets fixed, which it has to get fixed, because we can't just uh, have this be a popularity contest in the sense of, oh, how much money have you raised? Or, you know, um, how many unique donors do you have? Because people, if you're being shut out of the process via the media, that's also a form of blackballing and blackmailing and so forth. And guess what? That's just as bad as you know actually physically telling people not to vote for someone it's the same thing so you know um the polling data is, is so important uh to get these candidates into the debates and i don't think it should be i think if you've got good ideas you filled out the proper paperwork you had a very basic threshold of support and i don't know maybe there's one or two other measurements that indicate that you're a serious candidate for president. You have every intention of following through on the, um, you know, the prospects of actually getting the nomination, you know, which is a problem for say Mike Ravel, who really doesn't have any intention on being president. Although he did say on Twitter or uh, the kids basically who are running his campaign threw that out there maybe to, you know, get a few more dollars rolling in, but. I don't know if that's going to be enough, uh, especially since those goalposts keep moving. But we all have to get busy 
you know, supporting Tulsi, uh, talking her up. If anyone does call you, which I don't know anybody who ever gets a phone call from a polling outfit, you know. Um, first of all, they're calling landlines, okay? They're not calling my cell phone. My cell phone number isn't, you know, it's not listed anywhere. So I don't know how they would get that phone number to call it. They're calling numbers like the, in the old-fashioned phone book, which unfortunately even here in florida they still print those and i don't know who's in it i don't know who wants their number listed number one and number two who's got the landline you've got to hit those two uh qualifiers in order to be in their book uh so you're gonna get maybe five percent ten percent of the population at the most and how many of those people actually vote <laughs> that's the other issue you know they call a number. Are you a registered voter? Sure. You know, I, I mean, who knows? All of this polling data is skewed. By the way, <laughs> after 2016, who really trusts any of these polls? Hillary Clinton. She's got a 95% chance of beating Trump. I think it was 91 to 9 in the New York Times. And then, you know, Trump wins and everybody is in shock. And at that point, it had to be Russia. Yeah, it had to be Russia because we, you know, our polling data was spot on. I don't know what happened to Hillary. Hillary didn't campaign and she was a lousy candidate. That's what happened to her. Okay, pretty simple. She didn't offer anything. People went with the uh, the orange uh, orangutan, as some people call him. At the time, he was my guy too. And I'm like, yeah, Trump, because I don't want Hillary, you know? And that was pretty simple. Um some of you were smarter than me, and you voted for Jill Stein. Good for you. Um, this time, if the same thing ends up happening, uh, Jill Stein is going to get quite a bit of support. And I'm hoping we don't have to worry about that. I'm hoping that Tulsi is the nominee. Because to me, Tulsi is, you know, the better... She's just the better candidate. She's a better candidate than anybody running, including Jill Stein, for that matter. Um... So we have to really be vigilant about calling these um, networks and these establishment people out on whatever platform they're on and say, hey, how can we trust your polling data when it comes to you know, qualifying for a debate? <laughs> Seriously, how can we trust your polling data? Because <laughs> you guys weren't really right in 2016 and we were talking presidential politics you know the general election not just the primaries the primaries yeah there can be a little margin for error and it's kind of like hitting a moving target to some degree but right now it's all about joe biden biden this and biden that um i guarantee you if they do a poll in another week or so or maybe even this week they will find that uh the joe biden craze supposedly has settled down and Bernie has again taken back his position as the leader of the pack. But we uh, we won't ever hear that because the polls are all designed to make the establishment candidates look good. I mean, how does Pete Booty Judge have eight percent? Really, eight percent? Oh well, you know, gay people are voting for Pete Booty Judge because they just. They do identity politics. They don't care about issues. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, intersectionality, by the way, is not a, a platform. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, somebody was on Jimmy Dore, nice lady. She ran against Beto in the primaries, and she's running against Cornyn, which is great. Um, but if you're running to convince, you know, hardworking Texans, guys who, you know, work on an oil refinery all day that you know they need to vote for you because of intersectionality <laughs> I, look this is where i depart from identity politics because there are issues you can run on issues you don't have to run on hey i'm spanish or i'm mexican or i'm latina and i've got um i'm a woman and you know i check all these boxes that's great if it happens that's great but what are you giving us for issues by the way tulsi gabbard 
hits high marks on intersectionality, all right? But I'm not voting for her because of that. I'm voting for her because she's an amazing candidate and we need her as president. And as the foreign policy stuff unfolds right before our very eyes, we got Tulsi there who can basically do a running commentary. You know, she should just, Tulsi Gabbard should just start streaming a newscast talking about Venezuela. You know, maybe do it with a delay, okay? Or whatever country she wants to, you know, it could be Iran, could be any country that we're needlessly involved with, and which is pretty much all of them. And she could stop the tape <laughs> and then do like 10 minutes of commentary on what they just said, and then roll the tape forward and then do another 10 minutes, and then it would be a campaign ad or, you know, just a, uh, a nice little sit-down segment with Tulsi where she um, does her own commentary, running commentary on uh, the state of the military-industrial complex. It would be awesome. So, just an idea. Um, so anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video. I'm still really under the weather here. I think it could be a conspiracy. Um, and they're trying to get me off of YouTube. And so it's hard for me to talk. But I, um, I managed to get through this video. And I'm going to try to do more videos today. We shall see how that goes. Uh, in the meantime, again, you've got to be vigilant calling out fake polls. Because they are. They're fake polls. And, um, you know, you can go over to Status Coup with Jordan. He's got uh, intel on it. I think Kyle Kalinske did a, a segment on it. Just go to the usual good sources out there. And remember, intersectionality, it's not going to win you an election. Um, you want to bring in independents and people who are fair-minded, who are really already tired of identity politics. Because it's, it's not an issue that people care about. I mean, there is a small segment who feel that they've been marginalized and they need to continually um, call attention to this issue. But guess what? You can beat all the odds if you have the right combination of issues that will help the American people. And that's why I'm voting for Tulsi. She convinced me. It wasn't intersectionality. It was... Uh, Tulsi Gabbard and her policy positions, and I'm thankful that she would break all of the glass ceilings, but in the end, uh, our country is the most important thing, and if it's an old white guy like Bernie Sanders that breaks uh, all of these glass ceilings, <laughs> he wouldn't be breaking any, but he would be doing the job that we elected him to do, and he would be fair to all those people who wanted to actually break the glass ceiling, so you have to look at it that way. So anyway, I'm done. I'm struggling here, so I'll talk soon.